could sign you up for um, a lot of networking within the economic development um, you know world in Arizona so has anybody thought about you know wanting to possibly go to that and attend that where's that is that a, an out of town a, is that an out of town meeting what's that it'll, it, it'll be in Prescott yeah, it's at Prescott it's in Prescott okay yeah I would like to go to one uh, I'll, you know, I'll keep Seattle in touch with that. Uh, but that one yeah that would be good to go to you can do that one yeah it's so hard to tell it's so far out but yeah I would, I would definitely come into Okay. All right. So Steve's going to look at his calendar and, and really focus nine on. <laughs> yeah, it's nine months out. Down. <laughs> and then, uh, so we've got the spring conference. Um, the fall forum is considered kind of like the fall conference of the economic development, the spring conference, um, similar type event. They do awards at that um, conference as well. Um, so they, they, you know, there is a formal event that happens at the spring conference. Uh, both events are, you know, well attended. Um, no one's in May, right? That one is in uh, May, yes. Yes. Location to be determined. Typically, they go back and forth between Tucson. Uh, I, I believe it's probably going to be in Tucson because they go from Flagstaff to Tucson. They try to get outside of the Phoenix metro areas. Uh, a few years back, we had one in Lake Havasu. No, there. The spring we got the spring conference with AAD. The governor's conference is for tourism, um, which Josh, do you want to talk about that a little bit? He'll he'll talk about that when he comes up. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, is anybody interested in the spring conference? That's a, you. You go that, Mary, because that's the same month as uh, ICSC, and I would want to do too. Okay. So we so got we'll put Steve Mary here. down for the AAED spring conference. Have you attended any of those economic development conferences in the past? I think you have. So. Rural development. Okay. So the spring conference would be a good one to get a feel for that. Okay. So I'll put Mary down. Um, the ICSC, other we've got that one covered. Uh, the Governor's Conference of Tourism. Um, and then the Local First Conference which is a rural type setting. Uh, we usually, that, that event will be held in, in a smaller community somewhere in Arizona. Um, last year, or this last year when we attended, we went to Eager, Arizona, which I'd never been there. And um, it's in the middle of the state. Beautiful, uh, beautiful country though, and, and uh, it was well worth going. Is, is volunteers, or, or if we need to think about it more than you, know. no, you want to go to the de the governor's? I bet you did. I bet you that'd be a good one for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That'd be good. That, that's and we that's don't have to. We, we are two commissioners short. Uh, we're going to be in the process of of locating two more commissioners. So, if you want to do that one instead, we can hold off on the spring conference, and you know, so. Let's do that. Uh, we'll put you down, Mary, for the, um, that one is what you would prefer to go to, the? The first? The uh, tourism one? Is that what you, or? The local first. Local first one, okay. National Ministry, that's that spring. Yeah. We'll think about it, so. Okay. We did nail some down. Steve, yeah. if something changes on that, um, I think you can just shoot me an email. Oh, in October? Oh, yeah, for the... Oh, for yeah, the, I, I'm pretty okay. sure it should be fine. I just need to, the sooner I get the actual date. Okay. Wow. We'll, we'll work on that. Off, yeah. They might have that released already. I just um, would need to go look for it. Okay. So um, I think we made some good headway today. Um, I really appreciate you guys, um, you know, participation. And, and there's a lot of great events that uh, I think are going to give you insight into not only economic development, tourism, all those different, uh, the downtown, those type of things. So let's um, jump into the next item. Or do you want to announce? What's that? The next uh, reports. So let's see.
So um, oh. all right. That uh, that Main Street one, we didn't get anybody to go for that one. And that's in March. Yeah, I, and I coming believe up. Uh, well, we have two people down for that or something, and we, we want to talk to some of the Main Street group. I think they attended last time, so not necessarily from the commission, but, you know, we had a council member attend that event. Okay, okay. So we, recovered. we might have a couple different individuals attending that. Okay. And that's in Seattle? Yes. Um, that's what, that's what I, okay. So. Okay, what do we got next? B. You all set? Yep. Uh, you're all set? Yep. Okay, item number B is a report of the industrial park. All right. So, um, just kind of update you on some, some activities that we're doing out there at the park. Um, one of those activities is a, uh, this facility out there is called the old shock center. And it's on our property, the city of Kingman owned property. And it's actually, um, so you see one parcel there where you have those, those buildings. And then uh, we have the parcel next to it, which is um, right here. And then we have this parcel here. But really these parcels aren't usable or, or sellable because we have this old dilapidated um, structures that you can't use anymore. They really need to be torn down. And so staff has made it a priority to, to, number one, clean up the park and get properties that we own in a condition where we can market them and bring in new industry. And so as part of that, we, um, we've gone out, we've gone out to bid for uh, demoing the various buildings. So we are gonna start, um, uh, so we did get a contractor for two of these sites uh, at this point. It's uh, building 2B and 3A, and um, the permits are gonna be pulled on that on February 12th, and we'll have that uh, work commencing destruction of those two buildings uh, right around dis uh, February 17th. So February 12th, permits will be pulled, 12th will be the destruction. What's kinda neat about this project here is I'm gonna talk about a road grant, uh, which I've talked to you before, but. I'll give you an update on that. Uh, this property is adjacent to one of the roads that we got a grant to pave where there's currently no road. So we're gonna be creating infrastructure around this site, uh, which is also gonna help it be more marketable. I'll update you quickly on the foreign trade zone um, report that we've been working on. So the city of Kingman economic development, uh, we wanna look in the foreign trade zones and the possibility of t obtaining one for the uh, Kingman Industrial Park. Um, in order to do that, we, uh, we wanted to answer some questions. And so what we did is we went out and we found a consultant that specialized in foreign trade zones, either creating them for communities or worked with them in the past. And uh, there were a few specialized consultants uh, out there and uh, we started working with a company called uh, Foreign Trade Zone Solutions, LLC. Mm -hmm. So they agreed to work with us. And some of the questions that we wanted to know was, what is the feasibility um, of the Kingman, whether it's a subzone um, of one of the f uh, current uh, Phoenix foreign trade zones? That was one of the questions that we wanted them to answer for us. Um, also, there's a subzone, or there's a zone up in, up in Vegas and that's another close proximity. We want to look at that and within the rules, what are the uh, requirements? What would they allow? Um, a recommendation of a plan to implement a foreign trade zone in Kingman if we're able to. Um, timeline for implementation of, uh, of creating a zone. Budgets, you know, what would be the budget to, to go about doing that? And so we created this list. That report is, um, they basically get the first draft to us. We're gonna review it, um, send it back out. So hopefully within a couple of weeks, we'll have a final draft of this report that we can present um, to you guys and to council. So I talked about the three um, paving roads project um, out there at the industrial park. Currently that project, um, so just to kind of go over it again, it's gonna reconstruct roadways on uh, Port Road. It's 
gonna do about 0.23 miles, uh, government road, 0.35 miles, transport road, about 0.35 miles, and uh, we were awarded a grant for this project. It was $275,000. So we're currently in the engineering phase. Uh, we've already received the 15% coordination plan sets, and we are going to be reviewing them with staff tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're, the project's currently on track, and the, um, you know, so our timelines are, are good. Um, so these, these are the roads, and the, these roads are going to come in uh, play in, in, in the next slide where I talk about additional roads that we're working on getting um, put into the county maintenance system. Um, these three roads were in, in position where um, they would have to be reconstructed before the county would even consider bringing them into their maintenance. Uh, here is the uh, property that we just talked about. Right here is where um, that shock center location will be. So you can see East Port, <coughs> which does not exist, will, will be a road uh, adjacent to one of our sites. We are also in the process. We have five other industrial roads out at the park that have never been put into the county maintenance system, but they exist. And um, we, we were tasked by county staff to put them in a, in a, in a um, condition that they would potentially submit to, or they will submit to uh, the Board of Supervisors. It still would have to be voted on and approved by the Board of Supervisors, but county staff is, uh, agreed to do that based upon the work that we did to these roads. Um, we did some chip sealing uh, through our own funds and through our own budget to do that. And so this road right here is one of those roads that we need to reconstruct as well as this one. And you can see Port Way. These other two roads, they were constructed at some point, but were never put into the system. So if they were continue to do, um, you know, go down, uh, there would be no system in order that we'd have to go out and get a grant we'd have to figure out how to <coughs> repave them but we were able to um, they were in good enough condition they were actually in better condition than some of the roads that are already in the county's maintenance system and then we did a chip seal over them and so um, our hope is that these roads are going to be uh, approved and so that'll be on the agenda in march at the county and so we'll be excited if if we can just kind of get all the roads squared away since we uh took over operations out there. I want to talk about land sales. Uh, we've been aggressively selling property out there at the airport. And a recent land sale <coughs> has been uh, accompanied by the name of Interstate Group. Uh, you might be familiar with, with them. They currently operate out there. Um, they build trailers. Uh, they're doing an expansion. And so what they did is they purchased this building right here. And then... Um, through a broker, they reached out to us because we have the land right behind it. And so we worked with them to uh, process this property through. It actually works really well for their property, um, you know, because we don't have to, we didn't have to do anything to, we didn't have to put a road into it. You know, it, it worked really well. So um, that land sale was completed uh, just this last month. And um, the appraised value on that property was $40,000. And the way the land sales work, in case, um, just as a reminder, that, that those funds come in, any costs are taken out, and then uh, the, the funds are allocated toward a five-year um, on the airport side of any type of projects, maintenance, operations, in, in operating the airport. So that's the update on the industrial park, if there are any questions. <coughs> How many land sales have you had in the last year and a half? So um, that's our fourth land sale fourth. that we've done. Okay. Any more questions on that? Very interesting. Okay. Mr. Noble, you're up. Right? Yep. One more what? Uh, actually, you're on the agenda first, if you... Yeah, he's on the agenda oh, first. Yeah. You want, so I could either do Sylvia's right now while I'm up here, which is... Uh, the commercial report? Yeah, all right. <coughs> Correct. Okay. okay, and then we'll go to Josh. All right, that, that'd be fine. If you guys are okay with that, we can switch yeah. those around. Okay. 
Sort of thing. And by the way, Sylvia got this new position, right? Yeah. So. So. Um, yeah. Commercial and retail. Um, as of January first, twenty twenty, Sylvia has transitioned into uh, the new job position as the economic development manager for retail. So over the past uh, several years, Sylvia has obviously been a planner within the city. She's done a wonderful job. Throughout those years, she's also worked on several projects related to economic development. And uh, something you guys might know, you might not know, is Sylvia and I worked together at the county when she was at the county, and, and I was at economic development over there. So I worked with her on projects over there, which is kind of neat um, to be working with somebody years later in economic development and uh, she's a real go-getter, uh, very aggressive and um, crosses her T's and dots her I's. She's, she follows up on these projects, the little bit that we've already been working on, these retail projects, um, you know, I've been very impressed and excited to have her doing that. So her expertise in planning and the understanding of economic development is gonna make her a key uh, partner um, with our team here. <clears throat> One of the things that um, we recently did is uh, we hired a national retail um, attraction consultant. Um, and when we did this, we went out, we looked for, um, we put it out for a bid, uh, but what we really wanted to target is not somebody who just gave us data and said, hey, go target these, these retail organizations, but we wanted somebody that had the contacts within those retail organizations. Um, that's worked with them, landed projects before, and, and held, held the hand of the project going from start of finding the site to uh, any of the issues that came up. And, and we were able to do that with a company called Retail Attractions. Uh, the owner, CEO Ricky, he has an economic development background. He actually worked for a city doing economic development. Um, and then uh, and coming out of that, he uh, started uh, doing retail attraction uh, for the city that he worked for, and he located, um, I want to say, they went from six retail organizations um, up to, by the time he was done within that city, it was over in the hundreds. And so then he started uh, branching out, started working with other communities, and I believe he works with uh, hundreds of communities throughout the U.S. Uh, so we uh, did a site visit with Ricky. He came out to look at the area, uh, meet with uh, stakeholders, of course, our team uh, to discuss commercial, retail, what do we have, what are the brokers, what are the, what are the lease rates, just <coughs> getting a whole grasp of, of what we have here in Kim Kingman. So um, after these uh, stakeholder meetings occurred, it was apparent how much knowledge and expertise in retail uh, their team actually brought. Uh, too. And, and so I really feel like we did a, we've got the right group. Um, and so we're going to go forward, you know, full speed ahead in trying to uh, attract and retain uh, retail to the city of Kingman. Um, as part of that, uh, we talked about the International Council of Shopping Centers. Um, this event is going to occur on, on May 17th and 19th, 2020. It's an annual conference, um, so our team's going to be there. It's going to be myself, Sylvia, Jean, <coughs> and also Ricky's going to be there. And so we're going to get to, uh, um, we're, we're not going to get a booth. Um, we're going to do like we did last year and just walk the, walk the show, pound the pavement, get meetings with uh, potential retailers and have conversations. And that was the, that was the thing that they recommend when we talk to cities that had booths before, <coughs> cities that currently have booths. Um, we talked to site selectors. Um, <coughs> instead of being in the booth and hoping somebody comes to you, we go out and we go to them. Yeah, that's worked very well in the past. And we did a lot of research to, uh, we, you know, a, a booth is going to cost $15,000. I'd rather spend that 
on, on other activities than a one-time shot like that, and we can still get into the conference and we can still talk to the people. Talked about the census 2020. Um, the count will begin in March, uh, so it's vital that the city of Kingman count every person uh, who's in the city. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. Population counts affect funding, state, federal presentation, uh, representation, and includes statistical information that future retailers, uh, commercial, and industries uh, look at. And they'll look at these uh, when they decide whether or not they want to come to Kingman. So it's vital that we get a, an accurate count, a high count. You know, the larger the population, the more uh, companies will look at us. Um, so more information can be found on that website. And then at our February, um, or at the next meeting, I don't know if it's going to be in February, at the next meeting, Sylvia's going to be here. She's going to present, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. I'm getting off of a cold a couple of weeks ago. Um, so she's going to present um, next uh, commission meeting, and she'll go in depth on that. She's actually, Sylvia, and I, I probably had it at the beginning of the slide, but I failed to mention it. She is down in Phoenix right now attending um, an, an, a national, um, um, basically it's a, uh, oh, man, I'm sorry. So she's down there attending the, the Arizona Basic Economic Development course. Um, and, and that's hosted by the Arizona Association for Economic Developers, but it's an international economic development course that is taken. So they just partner with the, uh, the local group to do that. It's a week course. <coughs> <coughs> so very, you know, she's out there getting more knowledge. Um, downtown Kingman projects that are going on. So this is just a list real quick of those those projects, we got the facade improvement program that was effective uh, January 1st. All that stuff's up on our website. They can get applications. Parklet and Pedlets affected the same date. Again, it's all been updated on our website. We're already getting applications in for these, oh. so we will start processing them. Um, they've been working on the infill uh, incentive districts, and, and that's a, an area where there's various incentives that are allowed for uh, locations of, of those businesses within those districts. Um, in the future, staff can provide a brief presentation on any of these programs when Sylvia's back. So if you put that on the agenda, um, she'd be more than happy to go over that. All right. So that is the update on retail. Any questions? No, well, thank you. Yes, you're up. We skipped over. You're next. <laughs> I'm confused. Good afternoon. Chairman Kirkman, Commissioners, Councilmember Nelson. Um, I guess this system doesn't tie into the general uh, K drive where we keep our files. That's where I put my presentation. Um, this is actually So I'd like to start with just a recap of our 2019 annual figures. Visitor center traffic was up 47% year over year, totaling 238,530 people. Motor coach visits, and that's about an average of 670 a day. Motor coach visits uh, was up 67% at 2,106, averaging about six per day. Um, I will say the motor coach visits, uh, we do see that decreasing um, with the uh, 
uh, restrooms and the staffing that we have at the powerhouse, we were having a difficult time keeping up with a couple of the companies, and so they're adjusting the itineraries. Um, I don't. I don't have any issues with that. I think that might spread it around to other parts of town as well as it takes some of the stress off my staff so we can focus on those individual travelers who have time to adjust their itineraries to visit different areas versus the motor coaches that are pretty much in using the restrooms, maybe buying something, um, you know, or they're visiting the museum, but they don't have time to adjust their schedules. Hotel occupancy <coughs> for 2019 was up 4% year over year at 69%. That compares to a national average of 66.2%, so we're heading um, ahead of the curve of the country. Hotel demand, that's room nights, um, was about 436,000 hotels for the year, which is a 6% increase. So you'll notice that's a little bit higher than the occupancy because we did have some added hotel rooms during the year. How many rooms do you think we have in the city? Um, about 1,700. I don't have the exact figure in front of me. Mm -hmm. Um, and gift shop sales for 2019 was up 23%. Uh, we had a 55.4% profit margin, totaling $299,105 in sales. Um, as I said, we, we are seeing some reduction in our motor coach traffic, so we may have a reduction in those sales this year um, and a reduction in visit, but I don't anticipate it being um, that much to uh, affect what we're looking at for our <coughs> budgets going into the next year. Um, hey, hey, Josh, I got a question on, yes. <coughs> on motor coaches. I know we're looking at somewhere to, to get those motor coaches to stop in downtown. How's that coming? Um, so, I, actually, I'd like to touch on that with the uh, powerhouse best use. Okay, That's Go ahead. an old business, if, you, if, if that's okay with you. That's okay. 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 Um, the, uh, some other notes I'd like to cover, uh, street drags. As you know, we had a successful year. We had 281 vehicles registered for the street drags. They had a cap of 300, but I think they had a hard time with you know trying to uh, get this going for the first year, getting everything lined up. But overall, they did a really fantastic job, 10 to 15,000 spectators. Over the three days, we had about a 21% average increase in hotel occupancy. Um, representing about eight eighty thousand dollars extra in hotel revenue for the three days. That doesn't include any of your restaurants or retail spending. So it was overall a, a good economic impact for Kingman, and we anticipate seeing that growing in the next year. They have dates scheduled for 2020, October 23rd through 25th. I think we're gonna. Um, the only real changes that we're gonna have is adding in some extra uh, space that they can have for the people doing staging. Um, for the races, so they're going to pull that back. Um, and then the uh, packets that I handed out, this is Uber Media mobile data. This is part of our Arizona Office of Tourism Marketing Cooperative, one of our projects. So we can do advertising projects or we can do research, and this is one of the research ones that we did. Um, what they did is they went back and they pulled the cell devices that are within their networks, and there's about 70 million devices nationwide within the net, those networks, and I don't know which ones they are specifically, um, but it's a pretty good uh, sampling of uh, people coming through. And if you have your location uh, awareness activated on your phone, then your phone would be captured in among uh, the devices. So they had... Uh, 256,702 unique devices captured over 2018. And not all of the data that we have do we have redistribution rights, but this is information here that we can distribute and share with you today. Uh, the demographic of tourists or people from outside the area, that's the first graph. And you can see that um, there's actually quite a few families that are coming through because they have quite a few between the years of 0 and 18. Now, when you look at this, this doesn't mean that this is somebody with a device that's between 0 and 18. What it means is when the, is they've profiled the people with those devices. So it could be a mother and two kids, or they know two devices belong to a, a husband and wife, and maybe they have kids, maybe it's just them. And then they tabulate all those profiles together, and they give us a real good look. And so you can see that we've got really a broad range of people that are coming through Kingman from all demographics and all age ranges. Uh, mostly, this is going to reflect domestic travel. So the devices that are captured in here, for the large part, I think 96% of the devices 
are um, U.S. that they captured, so it's not capturing devices that are not in um, our U.S. providers. The next is uh, by race, 58% um, white, and then we also had 7.7% um, uh, African American, 5.6% Asian, 24% Hispanic, 4.5% other. And then education group, um, and you can see the highest is some college, two-year college, but that really goes the gamut as well. Quite a bit bachelor's and over 10% higher education over a bachelor's. Demographic for tourists income-wise, so the largest group is 30 to 74,000. Um, that makes sense. That's, uh, that's your national average. Um, but we had quite a few that were in the upper ranges, so 12.5%, 75 to 99,000. Um, and over 100,000 was about 23.5%. So we're getting quite a few people with some um, serious income coming through Cayman that we could tap into. And then the household, or yeah, the median income, about 61,000, and median home value, 240,600. So they break up the different people, um, the different profiles into uh, uh, different affinities that they, um, you know, whether they're a casual diner or they're a parent or they're interested in the outdoors. And what this shows is the individuals that are coming in through Kingman, the highest um, categories that those individuals rank in. And the one I really want to focus on is the second one, business travelers. So we know we have a lot of business travel that's coming through Kingman, and it's about 21% of our traffic is highly associated with business travel. So about one in five is, um, and whether they're, they could be, here on uh, leisure travel, but they typically are business traveler. Um, you know, it's not going to distinguish what they're coming in on, but this just kind of lets us know what sort of travelers we have coming in. So I think it's a good sampling that shows we have quite a bit of business travelers coming through the area. And then the top location affinity. So they have a baseline in America on what sort of locations people um, frequent, where they uh, patronize uh, the business that they patronize. And what they do is they look at that compared to our group that are coming through Kingman. And you could see the uh, businesses that are listed there have a higher affinity. Uh, they're more likely to visit Kingman um, than other places. So you can see a lot of truck stops, gas stations, that makes sense, hotels. So we're really in an area where people that travel um, do like to come through. And I think this is some data, and there's actually about 100 hundred different locations and not all of them are strictly travel some are more retail and this is something that Sylvia and I are looking at for when she's going after who to bring in retail wise to Kingman this gives us a really good snapshot of who your customers are and you may not be reaching them because you don't have a site here in town and then we've got our uh, top 20 points of interest so we we looked at um, area attractions in and around Kingman and we wanted to have an idea of what sort of things that people were doing, where they were going. I think one of the most interesting ones is the number one is the historic downtown shopping district. And I think we went from 2nd Street to 6th Street. That's basically the traditional um, historic downtown area. And you can see that's three times higher than the traffic coming into the powerhouse. So if you look at the devices that were uh, pinged in the powerhouse at 1,488, and you know we had about 238,000 that visited the powerhouse, then extrapolating that out, that means that we had about 810,000 of these visitors um, that visited uh, at the downtown area, so about 2,200 people a day on average, which shows that our travelers are participating and going to the downtown about 2% or 1 in 50. The next one is we took the top states that were reported in the mobile report and we compared to those to the top 20 states that sign in to our guest book for the same year and we found some interesting outliers for, for a large part they're the same there were a couple that were in the mobile report that weren't in the the guest book report but vice versa a couple in the guest book report in the top 20 that weren't in the mobile report the ones that really stood out is new mexico and oklahoma which were both number five and seven in the mobile ranking, but as far as our guest book, they weren't um, all, all the way down to 35 and 36. So I think that shows that we have some real business travelers that are coming in. They're not here for leisure travel from those two states. And so when we're looking at maybe um, you know the traffic that's coming in, they're doing business in Kingman um, or 
coming through the area doing business, those are two of the top states where those are coming from. Then the last page, we've got the 2018 U.S. metro area. So these are the metro areas where those visitors are coming from. Not surprising, Phoenix and Los Angeles, although I would have thought Los Angeles would have been higher than Phoenix. Um, but those are on the top of the list, along with Las Vegas and Albuquerque, uh, Santa Fe area, which we saw New Mexico was one of the top um, states on the, the report or the chart before. So that, that makes a lot of sense. But this really tells us, the people that are coming into Kingman, where they're coming from, and what sort of markets we might reach to to um, drive more traffic to the area. And then you can see the, the highlighted metro area. So when you look at these metro areas and how do they um, tabulate those, those are the same metro areas that um, like television stations would look at when they're trying to figure out what their reach is. There's the same boundaries um, that's used by, by uh, those. <coughs> Any questions on Uber Media Report? Yeah, this, so this is this is Uber, the Uber, the the ride, like the taxi company. No, this Uber is Media a is a company that specializes in uh, machine learning and going through data, and then they do reports specifically on mobile data throughout the country. Um, there's uh, I don't know about uh, half a dozen communities in Arizona that all bought into this. So mm -hmm. the Arizona Office of Tourism made this as one of the offers, and they covered half, and then we covered the other half of that cost. Um, they do this. They're one of the nas nation's leaders in providing this sort of data. We actually have another company that we were contacted to um, that is a competitor to Uber Media that we might be looking at, maybe putting it in next year's budget. Mm -hmm. uh, might be a little bit cheaper, a little bit different data, but although this is, this is kind of a, a year-long snapshot, that other company will um, give us ongoing so we can look at month and month and, and kind of in the future see how that those demographics are changing. Does, does it um, explain like how they're getting the like the permissions for the data? Is it through certain apps on their phones? If or you have your location awareness on, sharing on, then that's giving permission for them to collect that data. So they're they're pulling it through the app market, like the Android app market or the Apple app market, or are they. I'm just trying to figure out where they're getting right. the data. So I I don't know oh. how I don't know the, all the inner workings on how uh, they pull yeah. it, but I know that what they said was you know as you're going and you're using your different apps and you mm -hmm. have location awareness, so there may be some users who might be. Um, if you have multiple apps and they're showing your data multiple times throughout the day. Um, you might show up on more of those points of interest because it's pinging on those points of interest where mm -hmm. someone else maybe there's only shows, shares, you know, once an hour. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I've been kind of recovering. Um, and so they may not share up on all the areas. So this isn't going to be an exact perfect map as far as where people are, are going, but it is a really good, um, it really does show us of those that are coming in where they're coming from and kind of profiles. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it all has to do with on your different apps, which ones you have um, yeah, location um, awareness turned on for. That's what I was thinking. It must be, they must have, be using data that's collected by certain apps that are sharing or selling that data, which, which you know. Either the apps or the providers, but yeah, I, I don't or know. Or the provider, yeah. Um, I was just curious just because it, it, it would skew the demographic slightly if the apps were apps that were geared towards younger people versus, you know. Right, right. It so could. I was just curious could, how yes. they're pulling in. So. Yes, and without um, uh, you know, really having more of an ongoing thing to see how that changes and adjusts mm. in different seasons. Um, you know, we have we know families will be traveling in the summertime or around spring break, and maybe at other times we have different demographics coming through. So it would be nice to know how that looks throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we don't have that access to that kind of data with this report. This is just a year-long snapshot. Cool. Okay. That's all I have. Yeah, I think the downtown map that the that they come up with. I know Steve's got one in his business, and uh, I think that's going to help people to know where everything is. And I thought, I, you know, I pushed for that, and and somebody took a hold of it and did it. And I think it's a wonderful idea. I mean, I know we've been talking about that for quite some time, and now that it's done, I go by the maps, and I always see somebody looking at it. So they must be useful to somebody. Um, and, and and if we got bus parking downtown, I think that would really help. Yeah. And we've struck to deal with Main Street to print those on an ad needed basis um, for different businesses if they want to have them as a courtesy of their customer. We have a nominal fee. We'll print them off and they can make them available. And so far we've had three different 
um, organizations or companies ask for those when we print it off for them, and we also make them available for people to pick up at the powerhouse. Yeah, I think we're going to get one for chilling, okay? Put it on our table. All right, uh, thank you, Josh. So I also wanted to just give an update, the economic development strategy action updates on strategy number 22, implemented community-wide hospitality service, customer service program. We did start distribution of a survey instrument provided by MCC's community and corporate education coordinator last month. We've got a couple of those back. Um, I need to do some you know, door to door to get more of those out and see if we can't get some, some more of those surveys out. And then we have a better idea of what um, areas our, our hospitality businesses feel like we're lacking in and, and they could use some um, educational services at. A uh, couple of announcements. Um, our new monument entry sign the construction for that has already begun. Um, I don't know exactly when it's going to be installed. I'm thinking around April, but it will be sometime this spring. And so I'll keep you posted on that as we move forward. And then on March 13th, the uh, Arizona Route 66 Association, in cooperation with the Mojave County Historical Society, is going to host a year-long exhibition of Bob Waldmeyer's artwork um, in the, the back uh, reading room. They're renovating that room for a new display. This is going to be something that we can have, um, uh, you know, a different display every year. And so they're putting quite a bit into renov renovating that space and uh, make that something special. So I'll keep you posted on that. But just put it on your tentative calendars, March 13th. That's a Friday the 13th um, from 3 to 6 p.m. And we'll get invitations out to you. So will that exhibit be tied into the Bob Holt so we're discussing, yeah, incorporating that in. We're actually not just going to be showing the artwork, but some of the articles and the history that show why Bob Waldemeyer is special and interesting for Route 66, because we can't just put something up and expect people to understand what they're looking at, yep. the correlation to the movie Cars and Fillmore and all of that, and we want to tie it to Kingman as well. Good point. Yes. Are you done? Yes. <laughs> all right. I don't, and maybe I already know. So I, th I think we did quite a bit in cooperation with okay. the street drags. Um, the street, actually, KPD held uh, monthly meetings okay. where we brought in the sheriff's department, uh, DPS, um, and the city streets department, city parks, us, and we all sat and made sure that we put something together that would work for everybody. We did do a sponsorship with the street drags. I think it was a three thousand dollars sponsorship to help, um, you know, with getting their seed money for having it go. Um, but it's uh, it's not directly supported by the city, but the city is definitely going lock and step to make sure it's a successful event. We do have funds for tourism initiatives, so I'd be okay. interested in hearing what they have to say okay. and how it could okay. impact okay. tourism. Oh, moving it up then, or is that an yeah. additional? Uh, it's all him. Been doing it for a really long time. Okay. But um, evidently, it's being That might be something for them to coordinate with the uh, Mojave County Parks they Department. Have, have yep. Okay. Yep, to me. Uh, and just one other thing, um, since we discussed that the Arizona Governor's Conference is July 22 to 24, it'll be in Scottsdale this year, so. Okay, any, thank you. Any more questions? And we do no. have the powerhouse um, on the agenda under old business, so. Okay. All right, thank you, Josh. Thank you. Mr. Steve Johnson. Welcome. I know it's taking a lot out of your day, but 
No, that's that's just fine. So, um, good afternoon, Chair, uh, Commissioners, uh, Councilperson Nelson. So, I'll try to keep this brief. Anybody that knows me knows I like to talk. So, um, <laughs> master plan. Uh, we continue on with that. Uh, we estimate that'll be done June, July. That's a, a grant-funded project through ADOT and FAA, about $500,000. Um, 1,800 acre land release, uh, we continue that process. Um, grants, um, and uh, you'll, you'll get this as I talk. Um, this is kind of amazing, and I say this uh, with 30 plus years in airport management, and typically uh, grants don't come quickly with FAA or a, uh, different state agencies. Um, and these grants are paid by fuel tax, um, passenger taxes when you fly airliners. So none of this is coming out of your IRS payments. Uh, this is all self-funded, so it's the aviation system only. Um, we competed for a $2.5 million FAA supplemental grant to repave and mark uh, our main runway. Uh, that's with an ADOT match. Um, design is ongoing. The notice of proceed has been sent out for that. Uh, we are shooting for construction mid-year. Uh, that's fast track, by the way, for any kind of airport project. Um, we competed with 20 other airports in state for this, um, the supplemental grant. Only two got funding, Kingman and Prescott. Um, and we didn't pull any strings with any of the politicos in D.C. or at the legislature. So um, that's sort of stellarly amazing. Um, ADOT's offered us a $200,000 design grant for Taxiway Bravo. Uh, we'll be taking that to the council probably here uh, in the next few weeks. Um, for the next fiscal year, uh, back it was still on grants, um, it looks like we are up for a $200,000 ADOT grant to uh, study the airside drainage, which hasn't been studied since the place was built back in the early 40s. Uh, and on top of that, a $1.4 million FAA uh, and ADOT grant for a phase one rebuild of Taxiway Bravo. Um, when you basically add all that together in just over two years, um, we've been offered over $4.8 million of grants. For an airport our size and a community this size, that is highly unusual. Um, airport stormwater. We have a grant, uh, not a grant, but we have a stormwater process that's underway as we speak. Um, uh, the fifth CAMA uh, chamber mixer was successfully held at the airport on January 16th. Uh, we had a successful air fest that was held in early no uh, November. Planning's begun for next year's event. Um, we believe that it doubled in size and that people basically were staying uh, at least double the amount of time that they did uh, for the uh, initial event uh, a year ago. Um, Ameriflight will be storing some aircraft out at the airport, 10 to 15. That should go on for roughly a year. The process there basically is they don't have enough pilots to fly aircraft, and they need a place to store them. Um, so we'll make some revenue out of that. Frontier Frontier Flight Holdings is... Uh, basically bringing 10 of the jets that are out at the airport back to flight status, flying them overseas and using them for airline service in foreign uh, locales. Um, and we are looking into the possibility of um, a start point for a national women's air race in 2022. Uh, I'll be talking to, the, uh, it's the 99s, to them in regards to, and again, a start point basically means they're on site for five days uh, they're in hotel rooms, they're going through briefings, they're doing uh, minuscule, nauseating, and I say this because we did this at Havasu in 2012, checks on the airplanes. It's quite a big deal. And again, they're racing against the clock. It's not like a pylon race. So they would start here, and they'll end up somewhere on the East Coast. Uh, and they do this annually and have since about 1929. Other than war years, Amelia Earhart started this whole thing back in 1929, <clears throat> and we are working on the uh, airport website. So with that, any questions? Oh, you have been busy. <laughs> um, the 4.8 at this point would be uh, applied for. Um, the ones we've been awarded, um, well, with the FAA, you're never awarded anything until you've gone to bid, until they have hard numbers. But the fact that 
that we're going through design and all that, typically unless something really bollocks is, you're going to get that money. Um, so at this point, it would be the 500000 the $2.5 million, um, and then everything else is in queue. But again, once you've gone through their process, uh, their ACIP process, and they have you lined up, unless there's a national emergency or some sort of bollocks that way, once you're in line, you're in line. So uh, it's not guaranteed, but if, right. if we're on the list, we should be up for $4.8 million. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's a lot of stuff. This is under old business, right? No. Yes. So, okay. Well, <clears throat> so I want to talk about branding under old business. Um, so Geo and Associates, Inc., um, what they've done is they've completed the research and review along with seven uh, stakeholder focus groups that was held here at Kingman. And in that process, they're, they're summarizing and creating uh, the brand development plan. Uh, so the, bl the brand plan will clearly outline recommendations based upon the research from those groups and the city of Kingman. Um, so they're in the process of building a story uh, from those assets uh, that will help us stand out and, uh, you know, as a destination above our competitors. Um, looking at the timeline here, a um, couple of these phases are already done. The discovery phase is, is completed. That discovery, um, and then you have the research phase from November to December. We've completed that. Uh, then they're in the process, the brand development, and then the brand presentation. So going back to those dates, the discovery phase, this was everything that included uh, in regards to that. Um, and we can read it. I don't want to read it all, but um, basically, uh, you know, they looked at a lot of our old plans. They wanted to see what we did in the past. Um, and and um, so there's a list of a lot of that that uh, they went through and reviewed. And then um, the most recent phase that we went through was where uh, probably a lot of you participated in this, where they came in and, and they asked a lot of different questions uh, around a table. They did seven groups of, of interviews with uh, various uh, um, individuals throughout the community as part of that group. So, um, and, and that's a list of, you know, what those groups uh, were made up of, city government, city staff, community members. Uh, it was a two days that they did that. And, and, and the objective was to determine uh, an identity, uh, Kingman's strongest and most competitively appealing assets for prospective visitors, uh, determined and defined by past and current research uh, that was available. And then um, looking at the history, the culture, topography, way of life, uh, built and nature of environments, uh, along with the people of Kingman. And this brings us to the current process that they're going through right now. Um, they're going to create an executive summary, um, look at market demographics, uh, go through a SWOT analysis, um, of course, create the brand, the logo, the tagline, messaging, um, collateral artwork, marketing strategy, internal brand management, adoption strategy, external brand management, adoption strategy, advertising approach. What we need to do in regards to that are tactics and the strategy. Um, so that's in the process. And then... Um, the last part would be the actual brand creation, in which case they will put an overview together. Uh, they'll look at successful brand uh, revital revitalization campaigns, start with the uh, understanding of what the original sources of the brand equity were to begin with and how they evolved 
how they perform. The brand will uh, ref be refreshed. Um, we'll build on any of those positive associations that have been made with the, with the existing brand that we had. Essentially, the brand entity um, that has been built, the objective would be to utilize any current past brand um, equity and refresh it or evolve and use it to build more targeted destination brand, um, a brand that speaks to a targeted audience with creative, uh, it's more modern, up-to-date. <coughs> um, so they're in the process of building that story. And um, I believe that uh, you guys are going to be... We have a meeting at 1 o'clock with them today. Having a meeting on that. And Gary's been... He's, he's all set with He's it. headed that up. Um, yeah. So uh, <coughs> any questions on that in regards to the brand and where we are today? <laughs> I have one question. Uh, Hopefully, I can answer it. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, did you ever see a um, like something that they've done where they've taken a you know like all of this old information that they've researched and actually seen like their their process and seen what they came? That would probably be a better question for Gary, um, okay. as he was part of the process when it was uh, started. Uh, well, I would okay. imagine that when they went through that process, they looked at um, you know. Um, examples like you're saying of, of mm. what they've done and created for other communities yeah i, I can answer that question because i was in there uh when we went to uh to choose geo we had seven different uh, proposals and uh, we looked at all their uh, work that they did mm -hmm. in the past with other cities and stuff like that and uh out of out of the seven we felt that geo was the well their numbers for the for, for what they would cost it was in in our line but uh they uh, they were kind of a local company, right, Deborah? And and, and uh, we right, figured, we, yeah, yeah, and we figured that they would do a good, really good job. And uh, I talked to Gary, and this this meeting we're going to go to today is uh, not maybe the finished product, but it's kind of the 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 step that we're we're looking for. Um, and and Gary said that uh, when we go to the meeting today, we're going to be surprised what they come up with. So I'm pretty sure that. Uh, that uh, we picked the right company. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I like to see the, the process. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's nice seeing kind of finished product as your portfolio, but to yeah. see what you started with is even yeah, more absolutely. impressive where you can see the And uh, we will report on that in our, in our next meeting. Okay. Get that on the agenda. Cool. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Use of the powerhouse, Josh. Thank you, Commissioner Kirkham. Um, so I know you'd asked about the uh, uh, motor coaches. I kind of tie that into the powerhouse because um, you know we're looking at uh, use in that area as well as the downtown area and how to get motor coaches into the downtown. Um, so I think you were asking if we identified locations for motor coaches to park in the downtown area. Is that correct? Yeah, that's 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 that, that's right. Okay. So a couple yeah. of the areas that were looked at is on the powerhouse side um, along uh, Locomotive Park there on Beale Street. There's a, a couple areas that we're looking at so that we have access for people that are going to Mr. D's, the museums, especially as we look at bringing in the drive-through shield that's going to take up space that's being utilized right. Um, right now. We also have some re, uh, repaving and striping that's going to be taking place on the side of the powerhouse parking lot between the powerhouse and um, the railroad tracks. On this side of the downtown, we're looking at, um, I think the, uh, the one area that's pretty much identified and we're going to go with is a section of, actually I could probably pull up Google Maps here and that might help. A section of 5th Street between Beale and Oak. Because there is easy access, it's a, about 100 foot of pull through space. Is that on the street? Yes. Yeah, when, when you're looking you're at about. where motor coaches are going to be able to pull up, you've got to look at clearance. And so when we're looking at um, parking lots, there's an issue with the downtown parking lots because of the, the quick rise and fall. Um, so this area right, or I'm sorry, on 5th Street, this area right in here, which is by the 911 call center, 
is an area that we're looking at because it gets them parked right next to um, where everything is downtown. Um, and that's a good one. I think that's great. At areas here um, on Oak Street so that you can have two. When we'd have motor coaches parked, particularly when we were having a lot of different companies, we could have up to six motor coaches at once. I think usually you have one, but you can have two or three quite often, and you can have quite a bit. So the one thing that we don't want to do is just have one space, and then that's used up, and it deters motor coaches that come, and they find that there's nowhere to park. When they're looking at the parking areas, um, because we have so many downtown events, we don't want to make it difficult for people coming to chill on Beale Street or the downtown um, First Fridays. So many of the motor coaches, if they're coming in for restroom break, for a lunch, even for a dinner, um, if we have those locations identified that this is bus only parking from this time to this time, so if it ends at 5, then after 5 o'clock, if you don't have a motor coach parked there, any cars can park there. Of course, if a motor coach is already parked there because people are having dinner, the motor coach is there until people are done having dinner, and then it can leave, and then it's open for general parking. So I don't think we're looking at any location that's going to take um, regular car parking away for our evening activities and hours. We're trying to identify locations where motor coaches can come in. They have designated parking for the times that motor coaches need to come into the downtown area. Does that answer your questions, or you have any, any yeah. other questions? Um, and that was on average. I'm, I'm probably going to have to come down to that powerhouse and talk to you one day. Yeah. And right now, the average is about six per day. Yeah. For motor um, so it was in house. 2019. Right. Um, but at the start of January, we had um, one or two motor coach companies oh. uh, stop stopping at the powerhouse. So we're, we're down to maybe one or two. And when we, when we have motor coaches come in, we have a sign-in sheet. So we know who's coming in mm -hmm. for a large part. Um, we can always get in contact with those motor coach companies and let them know once we've identified where these parking areas are, what restaurants and businesses are going to be available for them to utilize the restrooms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the powerhouse, we've got four restrooms. The women's downtown has four stalls, the men's two urinals, two stalls, and then upstairs they both have three stations. So between that, you'd still have lines that went back 30 feet, people trying to use mm -hmm. the restroom, because you'd have a lot of them come in all at once. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that's where it can become difficult. And we want to make sure that the, the, the businesses and the restaurants downtown are able to accommodate that. And if they can, you know, they're going to have an increase in business, but they're also not going to be able to push people away just because they're not coming in and maybe not staying long enough to order food or, or whatever mm. there may be. Part of it is relationship building. When you have motor coaches come in, they need to know that that's going to be um, a service, an amenity that's going to be there for a while so they can schedule it into their tour. So mm -hmm. when you have people coming in, you may only have them coming in using the restroom for a year before they start actually giving the extra time to um, incorporate the experience of downtown and eat downtown, shop downtown, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And there's no space to expand restrooms in the powerhouse, is there? Um, mm -hmm. So we did look at that. I, I don't really think so because um, there's large gaps uh, where they used to have equipment set on that are taking up spaces. So the causeways that we have going back right now um, are already you know going through those areas. So. For instance, where the restrooms are now, we were hoping we'd be able to expand the restrooms mm -hmm. into one of those areas, but then I found out that we've got two big areas that are about 12 foot by 12 foot solid concrete. Oh, yeah. There's nowhere to go. It, it's already, you know, mm -hmm. already filled in. Unless we're gonna we're gonna go and demo that concrete out mm -hmm. and make <laughs> space. <laughs> so I've seen those. So I'm not gonna do that. But yeah, and this this area over in here at Locomotive Park um, and potentially by the Arch, those were the other areas that we're looking at for downtown parking. And that would service the um, west end of downtown businesses. But it sounds like your 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 primary objection was the bathroom, um, for the and staffing. So when they're coming in and they're, we, we actually brought some um, you know coffee machines and some. We have a, a local um, uh, vending machine vendor mm -hmm. that brought in a coffee machine and snack machine so that they can accommodate. And so we're we're able to um, help uh, with those. But then you have the people that want to. Just buy the snacks off, you know, the cactus candy and that mm -hmm. sort of thing off the shelves or, you know, buy product. And as slow as we were going, because we only have a staff person or two staff persons available at that time, um, it was it was holding the process up. And so you had motor coach companies waiting on people trying to use the restrooms, trying to finish, you know, mm -hmm. buying something, whatever so it was. Um, the bigger um, 
benefit for us, we think, is when motor coaches are scheduling to tour the museum because that's really experiencing what Kingman is about. Mm -hmm. I don't mind people that need to use the restrooms and want to buy snacks and get, you know, refreshments. Mm -hmm. Go to the places in downtown that really are built for accommodating that. Okay. Okay. Um, and then kind of leading out from that, traffic counting is one of the things that uh, Steve had, or uh, Commissioner Lasura had recommended that we look at for helping us to schedule when, uh, you know, when to have our, our front desk staffed at the best times, what sort of days, what sort of um, times of day. So we've got quotes in from two companies so far. One um, is called um, uh, uh, track, uh, Shopper Track. Mm -hmm. Right, chopper track, and the other one is called Countwise uh, for putting in a couple cameras so that we can count. One, it's going to alleviate our staff if we're not having to sit there and try and click when people are coming through. We'll get a much better, accurate count. Mm -hmm. um, they use machine learning. The cameras are positioned overhead. Um, it's a, a dual lens camera system so that it's looking at each person from two angles so it can gauge the height, and then we can decipher whether, with one of the companies, we can decipher whether it's a child or an adult so we can get some demographics. Um, and then it'll, it'll actually eyeball. And I asked one of the companies, you know, well, when we have motor coaches coming in and you have a sea of people, how accurate is it going to be? And um, the rep was indicating that they've got cameras out on Staten Island for uh, people on and off the ferries. So they're real accurate. They can get seas of people and, and really um, mm -hmm. zero in on how many people you have coming in and out. Uh, but ranges, price ranges are from four to 7,000 to install for the systems. Um, you've got to have everything hot, um, uh, you know, wired in with Cat5 or Cat6 cable. Um, you've got to have all of the cameras installed in such a way that they get all of the right angles. And it's not cheap equipment. It's very specific equipment for doing um, this imaging required for machine um, for AI learning. And the operating cost, depending on what we'd want and which company we'd be looking at, would be $65 a month to 690 So basically anywhere from 800 bucks to $8,000 a year. Uh, for operating that. So we're looking at that and evaluating what makes sense for the powerhouse. Maybe that higher end doesn't make a lot of sense, but maybe there's something in that lower spectrum that would be a benefit for us for our own tracking and uh, staffing purposes. Um, and then the, uh, uh, the bricks on 66, which we are looking at a different name for that, but we've ordered in some sample products. So we've got some bricks and so we can do some testing. These are special clay composite. Um, that can be laser etched, and we have a couple vendors in town that can do that kind of thing, so we don't have to send them out to have um, the names done. We can have them actually installed sooner. So that's something that we're looking at and hoping to um, have some engineering done this year, and we can put um, you know, installation in next year's budget. So that's, that's the updates that I have with the powerhouse best use. Steve. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Right. Thank um, you. Can you call down to Sandy and tell her we're going to be a little late for this meeting? So they can, so she can notify them. Okay, next I got here is uh, meetings for next year. We talked about maybe going every month, and um, I talked with Gary and all that. And uh, we can always call a special meeting. We're gonna, I think we're gonna stick with every other month for right now. Uh, the cost of the staff and uh, and everything. If we had something that we really needed to discuss, uh, we could call a special meeting in the middle. So. So the meeting dates for next year, for this year, is today, January 28th, March 24th, May 26th, July 28th, September 22, and November 24th. And any questions? No? It's all, it's all good? Okay. We'll move on here pretty quick. We got... Mary, you've, uh, do, you, do you have anything more from uh, Main Street, downtown? Well, I haven't talked to Main Street, but I, I just did some analysis um, and reviewed ways that Arizona at Work could contribute potentially to uh, br you know, branding of downtown and contributing to downtown. And some of the options we, we are looking at is bicycle taxis. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we could potentially purchase some bicycle taxis. Um, there's one U.S. supplier out of Denver, and the, they're about 4,500. I don't know if we bought more than one. We could get a bulk discount. They come in a variety of colors, so we could paint them uh, or apply a decal potentially with the new Kingman branding, and we could pay for it from like an entrepreneurship perspective. So that uh, and it could be 
uh, maybe they they have a set route. If we if we started maybe with two of them, they had a set route where they went to Benali House and s certain downtown areas, and then maybe the the participants would graduate to ownership where they could operate it just like a regular taxi. If they would own it and, and operate it, um, but what if we did the tour thing? We would need uh, we don't have the means to take a fare, and we wouldn't want the participant if they didn't own the the taxi to to collect the money. So that would be one issue that we'd have to look at. Um, the other thing that I we... Saw, yep, I saw them we, down in uh, San Diego and they use a, a system that's like like the square that you use on your on your phone. Mm -hmm. And it's actually on the pedestal and you can pay for your bike right there. I think she means like the organization. Yeah, stuff yeah like I, I... Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I don't think the county through our program... I, I would have to talk about that with mm -hmm. our... Uh, Supervisors to see if the county would be able to do something like that, but it might be if the city, if maybe the city would be able to take the, the fare somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to partner, um, and if they ran out of the powerhouse, out or where would they, where would they run out of? Mm -hmm. um, cool so, idea. That is yeah. a good idea. We were thinking mm -hmm. we could do that um, during the festival. Uh, the bike club. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what we wanted to do. We looked cool. into it, but we couldn't afford to buy the bike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there. You can get them from overseas for about half the price, but that's mm -hmm. just really problematic. So, it, and the the suppliers in Denver, mm -hmm. and the, it looks like a really quality product. So, mm -hmm. um, well, that's good. Yeah, oh, thank you. Sure. The other, uh, there was a couple other things that we looked at. Is um, once we get the branding, is maybe we work with Unisource and we paint some electrical boxes, as mm -hmm. they've done in a lot of mm -hmm. downtown areas. Um, and then there's also uh, a. One of uh, somebody who owns some property downtown is considering letting us use that for a garden, so we could have a crew come in and, and create a garden. But then again, it would just be how is it going to be watered? But we could put some park benches and some plants in there, and that'd be cool. Yeah, that would be nice. So I'm a member of Fitbit. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you I go. Mean, I don't want to <laughs> volunteer anybody. <laughs> but, uh, I would participate. And we might, uh, the University of Arizona has some master gardeners in this area. So yeah, we're the working master gardeners do dig it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah they do. So we come in and uh, cooperate. Okay. So, yeah, they, they show us there's probably maybe between 8 and 12 of them. Yeah, so if, yeah. if they would be willing to supervise a crew, then we could... And we could get star well, nursery to donate. Okay, you got to keep the conversation <laughs> uh, on track here. We we're really pinched for time, Mary. I'm sorry. Okay, no, nope, that's okay. But, uh, that's a, that's, that, that's, that's, that's a good report. That's good. Uh, can you try and get to the downtown meeting uh, once? Uh, yeah. Before the next meeting. Yep, and, I will uh, and, find out who to and contact and get the schedule. Uh, and yeah, probably, I, I will. Uh, probably Sarah Elizabeth maybe has that. She's a go-getter. She probably got that information okay. when they have that. Okay? Okay. All right, moving on. <sighs> New business. <laughs> we have two resignations that were submitted this month. Uh, they were to two people that uh, were not attending our meetings, and we... Uh, Kind of ask them if they're going to come or not. <laughs> so, and they both uh, resigned. Got it, Bennett? Accepted. Yeah, we're, 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 <laughs> we, have to, we have to vote on accepting their resignations, I believe. You got anything else for us? I'll, I'll motion to accept them. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No, okay. Okay, number B. We've got to do this every year. We got to elect a chair and a vice chair, a new one. Not well, whatever. Uh, but but <laughs> I, I I don't know how to say this. But we got to elect a, we got to elect a, for a new term. Let's put it that way. And uh, I'll accept nominations for chairperson. Gene Kirk. All right. I guess uh, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Now for vice chair. We've got to decide on the vice chair, Barbara. Barbara was mm -hmm. the vice chair, and I think that uh, I got a I got a nomination. In a Aye. second, 
for all right. Do we want a motion it or are we eyeing it again? Got, no, we're, yeah, all right. We got a, we got a, we got a motion in a second. We'll call for the vote. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Okay. So that's done. All right. Uh, last but not least, the update of the Main Street Vista program. All right. Yeah, this will be a really quick update. Um, basically, the Vista candidate has been selected. And a meet and greet to introduce uh, her is in the process uh, of being scheduled. Um, and she will be joining us on March 16th. Um, and uh, we are, I don't, I'm sure you guys know this, but we are the primary sponsor. The City of Kingman is the primary spo sponsor for the, for the program. So um, that's, that's all I have on that update. Um, and uh, Okay. Um, is there any way you could get the person here for our next meeting? All right. That would be March 24th. Okay. And we can pick her brain and see what she's up to. Okay. That's it? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Announcement by any commission members. Any, uh, uh, Mr. Jim, you got anything? No, sir. Uh, How about you, Steve? One quick thing. Uh, I just wanted to put on the March agenda for a discussion about a downtown ice skating rink that will be um, public and privately funded, not municipally funded. It's okay. already gone as far as Venture Club, uh, Kingman Gold Valley you. Association of Realtors okay. Committee. So just want okay, to let's, uh, let's make sure we get that on the agenda. Steve, thank you. Okay. And, uh, and I'll talk to you. Uh, Throughout the month, well, well, things I'll add, okay? And then we get together and do the agenda again. Sure. Okay. okay. Any Anything else, Mary? Yeah, I just have something really quick. Um, we're coordinating a construction day, and it'll be April 2nd and 3rd at the fairgrounds. So that'll be for area youth to learn about construction trades and opportunities for employment in this area. Cool. Oh, that's very cool. Okay. Anything else? I have nothing. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second? Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The meeting is now closed.